Now, first of all, let's all avoid getting caught up in what I call the global panic demic. Should you be concerned and aware? Yes, absolutely. But if you stop and think about it, what does all the panic buying of toilet paper really do to protect anyone? It doesn't. So I'm gonna start by sorting fact from fiction so we can get some perspective and then let's discuss what you can do. Hi there. Today's vlog is actually a reshoot so that I can offer the latest information available on the COVID-19 virus so that you can get some strategies you can use to navigate this safely. Now, first of all, let's all avoid getting caught up in what I call the global panic demic. Should you be concerned and aware? Yes, absolutely. But if you stop and think about it, what does all the panic buying of toilet paper really do to protect anyone? It doesn't. So I'm gonna start by sorting fact from fiction so we can get some perspective and then let's discuss what you can do. Now, first of all, the COVID-19 virus is a form, a very virulent form of the SARS virus, SARS standing for secure, severe acute respiratory syndrome. It's a part of the family of coronaviruses and they originated in China, another unexpected Chinese export. But unlike the common influenza virus and even the SARS virus, what makes the COVID-19 really bad and virulent is because it has this furin cleavage site. Now, what that means is this furin cleavage site gives this virus the ability to quickly, efficiently, and easily enter the host cell and start to replicate, make the person contaminated, and eventually get them infected. The problem is just one strand of that virus can get into a healthy person and it can take up to two weeks for them to be symptomatic and they will become contagious and spread it around. So the lowdown is it's out there and where it's gonna show up, it's anybody's guess. And the current model is showing that it's doubling every three to four days. And this is why in the next three to four weeks, it's a critical period for the disease progression in the US. And this is the why for the steps that are being taken to cancel school, large gatherings, events, all this stuff, and, and really try to put a stop on the progression of the transmission of the disease. Now, for all of you guys watching this, or most of you, it's really important to recognize you are much healthier than the average person, including other athletes. This means that if you do really get exposed or contract COVID-19, the chances of dying from it are virtually nil. In fact, if you come down with it, it'll range from feeling like a mild cold to the flu. And the numbers you see on the news, these are for the general population of relatively sedentary people. And you need to know on top of this that in all of the severe cases, including the deaths, these patients all have multiple co comorbidities involved. In other words, COVID-19 does not kill people by itself. So the people who really are at risk are those who are overweight, diabetic, have heart disease, hypertension, some form of respiratory challenges, you know, influenza, pneumonia, history of smoking, COPD, asthma, asbestos exposure, things like that. People in these categories and other physical challenges need to be especially careful of becoming exposed and infected, okay? In other words, these people should severely restrict contact with others right now. Also be aware we are going into spring. So if you're going to get hay fever or other allergies, take action to mitigate these precisely because they impact your respiratory system. Now, all that being said, 
because you are so robust, if you do feel off, treat it as if you had a cold or flu exposure and, and, you, you're, and seriously back off on the work, the training, get plenty of rest, get plenty of fluids, broth, tea, etc., so that your immune system can rally and, and get over it instead of let it get over you. Now, we want, I want people to know that this virus has shown to persist in cold climates like Seattle where it's cold and moist and, and this is where it persists they can get on things hang around and then transmission is a lot easier okay in the even in the air but on the other hand if you reside in a warm dry sunny climate like say Palm Springs or uh, Tucson or Albuquerque not so much in, in, you, in those kind of climates you really have to have super close contact and have that person's fluids, you know, like they cough on you in a drive to get really some sort of form of exposure. So it's really low risk. And finally, as part of that part of that perspective, there are a lot of really smart scientists working on this. And science works amazingly well when there's real collaboration rather than competition and politics involved. It's gotten real, they've gotten real. So I really have faith that this is going to get get to solved. Now here's what you can do. First of all, avoid getting caught up in the hype because as we say in OFM, chronic stress is as bad as the carbs, the sugar, the processed food, the trans fats, the hydrogenated oils. Really, it has that much of a physical, physiological impact. For the next three to four weeks, avoid crowded areas. Okay? The other one is practice good hygiene. Wash your hands with soap and water. Soap and water are amazingly effective. Okay? And for now, make it a habit to carry some flushable wipes and sanitizer and wipe down before you get in your car, when you get in your car. And that's a great preventive measure. I've done this for years. I've always had wipes on me in the flu season. Now, here's a ritual I do at night. As I brush my teeth, I also gargle with an antiseptic mouthwash. And because we're going into hay fever season, I always also do a nasal irrigation with a neti pot. Um, nasal irrigations are great because they're going to rinse that out and that's where a lot of these kinds of viruses start in the respiratory tract in your nasal sinuses get out and get lots of UV light get out expose your skin your clothing the, when it's sunny get out there and if you can't get that get a spare tea lamp get a UV tanning bed session because UV light kills the virus it disrupts the RNA now another obvious one is up your vitamin C 500 to 1500 milligrams a day, not just for the obvious cold and flu fighting effects of vitamin C, but because vitamin C has a lot of important cellular signaling stuff like enhanced T cell production, cell redox, um, sig cell signaling, mitochondria energy production, uh, really important on, these, on a cellular level. And in conjunction with that, up your gelatin and collagen because that is also great for maintaining healthy cell membrane integrity. Another OFM thing is to get your vitamin D levels up. Get them adequate. We recommend to get it a minimum of 50, ideally 70 to 90 um, of 25 hydroxy vitamin D and because the medical reference range of 30 is too low. Another novel uh, strategy is increasing your nitric oxide production. You can do this by inoculating your skin with nitrosomonas eutropa through the motherdirt.com product. Um, you can also do it by eating nitric oxide rich foods and supplementing with L-arginine or L-citrulline or using the Beat Elite or uh, Alt-Red products um, because nitric oxide is potent. Okay? The uh, next thing EMF, mitigate that, that EMF exposure. I get it, we're not going to eliminate the cell phones, the computers, the Wi-Fi, but you can adopt a lot of great habits both in this short term and long term to mitigate your exposure to non-native EMF. And this is going to protect your cells from the COVID virus and other issues. Um, another great thing is cardiovascular exercise. Get outside do cardiovascular exercise of all modalities, long, slow, aerobic cardio, high intensity, interval work, tempo stuff, okay? 
it really is a potent preventative. Also, you should be intermittent fasting and do it the OFM way because it confers a lot of uh, benefits, okay? You, and, and hey, it's Lent. You can double down by intermittent fasting now because you're not only going to fulfill your earthly physical needs to prevent getting COVID-19, you're going to fulfill your spiritual needs, right? Okay, next thing. If you're training for an ultra endurance event and you're in a high training load, consider dialing that back so you're not so immunocompromised in that recovery phase immediately after training. Now, if you come to this for the first time and you haven't gotten fat adapted, consider changing over to a strategy of optimizing your fat metabolism because it's a, such a potent uh, tool for getting your health and performance up. And the last thing, be patient. This is going to get solved. Now, most of what I've outlined is stuff I'm already doing, and I haven't curtailed any of my activities. This included a trip to Texas for a week, a two-week trip to Arizona, and regular and close contacts with my preschool and elementary school children. And as you know, these kind of kids become magnets for viruses, bacteria, and they bring them home, and the gift of giving goes to their parents, right? So put down, after you've, that, so, after you watch this video, put down the device or you get away from your computer, go out there and run outside because this is the single most uh, strongest tool to keep you robust, prevent COVID-19, and keep you on that journey to reach your health and performance potential. Thanks very much.